I have found the most amazing way to manage all of my dot files across all of my machines. And it doesn't even matter if I'm using Linux, which I use Arch by the way, or Mac OS. Seriously, check this out. Right now I'm on my Linux machine and I don't have any dot files really installed. I have a decent looking terminal, but my fonts are messed up and my colors look like crap. Also, if I open NeoVim, NeoVim is completely unconfigured. It doesn't look very good and overall it's just a bad experience. But if I just run one command, I can install my Alacrity, which is the terminal I'm using, and my NeoVim configs immediately. Now, if I exit and then reopen my terminal, everything looks gorgeous. This is basically perfect. Now, if I open up NeoVim, NeoVim looks perfect as well. What is this amazing tool? It's called GNU Sto. I'm gonna show you what it is, how it works, and why it's so awesome. Seriously, stick around. Okay, so what is GNU Sto? How does it work? And why should I be interested in it? Well, these are all great questions. So <laughs> look at you asking great questions and being handsome. Well, if you're anything like me, you've accumulated a certain set of tools over time as a software developer. And if you wanna switch between machines, maybe let's say one machine breaks and you need a new one, or let's say you get a new machine for work, something like that, you wanna have your dot files and your configurations all set up as quickly as possible. And GNU Sto is a game changer that will help you achieve that very thing. So what is GNU Sto? Well, GNU Sto is a Simlink farm manager which takes distinct packages of software and or data located in separate directories on the file system and makes them appear to be installed in the same place. For example, user local bin could contain Simlinks to files within user local Sto Emacs bin, user local Sto Perl bin, etc, etc. Man, these Emacs people in GNU, huh? So let's go over really quickly how GNU Sto works and how how it's able to transport your dot files from one machine to another easily using symlinks. Let's draw it out really quick. Let's say you have a list of dot files. Now your dot files could be large, could be small, whatever, but you have a bunch of different kinds of dot files. Now these dot files could include anything like your ZSHRC file, your NeoVim configuration, and within your NeoVim configuration, you might want Lua files, plugins, etc. And then also possibly even like your terminal configuration. For me, that's Alacrity. And within Alacrity, you have like a color scheme and your actual like setup.toml file. All of these configuration files could live in a dot files repository in Git, and you can use GNU Sto to create sim links to manage these files on completely different computers. So let's just say that this is now your GNU Sto GitHub repo, right? You can use this GNU Sto GitHub repo to add your dot files to any computer you want. Now let's say this computer is my Mac OS machine. Now I can basically copy and paste all of my DAW files to this Mac OS machine from GNU Sto. And the cool thing is because of how Simlinks work, if I ever change any of these on my Mac OS machine, they could also be committed to this GNU Sto repository. I'll show you how that works in a second. Now let's say I have a Linux machine. Well, using GNU Sto, it's basically the same principles. You essentially copy and paste this DAW file setup here and you kind of repurpose it for your Linux machine. And this is all done using Simlinks. Let's draw some arrows here and one more arrow here. So using GNU Sto and Git, you can replicate your DAW files on any machine that's Mac OS or Linux, probably even WSL on Windows, but I don't really own a machine that has WSL on Windows. I'm sure you can do it like that too though. By the way, nerds, this video that you're watching right now was released days ago, ad-free on our new platform. It's called learn.typecraft.dev. For all members of this platform, this video was released ad-free with accompanying material that's basically a full tutorial in and of itself. This website is awesome. Seriously, you should check this out. Also, for all our members in YouTube, guess what? You get free memberships. Thanks for being ride or die, Typecraft gang. You're awesome. But again, if you want to be a member, sign up at learn.typecraft.dev. You're going to get videos early with accompanying tutorial material, and they're all going to be ad-free. You also get full courses. As of right now, we have one on NeoVim, one on Tmux, one on Linux coming up soon. And you get all kinds of goodies like community posts, special access to 
Discord servers and roles. It's awesome. Seriously, check it out. All right, let's get back to the video. All right, so we went over really quick about GNU Stow and how you can use Stow and GitHub to manage DAW files across all of your machines. But we've talked about doing this with symlinks and you might be asking yourself, what exactly is a symlink? A symlink is a special file in Linux or in Unix systems that acts as a pointer to another location in the file system or even across file systems. This enables you to access data from another location without having to duplicate that data. Now, typically in Linux systems, you would use symlinks to move executables from a deep folder somewhere in your file system maybe to a path that allows you to execute it a little bit easier. So let's say that in this folder here, some random folder, I have an executable file. That file is called echo something.sh. If I run this file, it just echoes out hello world. It's a pretty simple file as you can see. But let's say I don't really want to run this file using the directory some random folder. I could move this file to my home directory, but then I'd be duplicating the data, or if this was in a GitHub repository, I'd be moving it out of the GitHub repository to a local spot, and I don't really wanna do that. This is the perfect use case for something like a symlink. Now, to create a symlink to this file, this is what you'd have to do. We wanna type ln, which is a tool that lets you create links from one file to another in Linux. You wanna type the S option, which stands for symbolic, which means we're gonna create a symbolic link, which basically means it's gonna be a special file that just points to another file in the system. Then we want to specify the file we want to link to. This is going to be some random folder, echo something.sh. And then the second option is the file we want to call this. Let's just call this, I don't know, something.sh. That's going to be our symlink, is something.sh to the echo something file. Now our symlink is created. We can check by lsing our current directory with the L flag, which will show links. Now, if we type this, we can see that something.sh down here is linked to home chris some random folder echo something.sh. Also, you can check all the way on the left here, this L stands for link. That means that this file is a link to the file that's specified over here. Pretty cool, right? Anyways, now instead of having to type the whole entire directory out, we can just sh something.sh and that will do the same thing that is done in echo something.sh. It is linked to that file. But here's something cool about symlinks. If I now modify my something.sh file, let's say I go, I don't know, hello poops, something professional like that, right? If I run this file, it will say hello poops. Now, if I go to some random folder and look at the original file that's linked via symlink, I can see that this file changed as well. Interesting. So these two files are married together. They're completely coupled. If I change one, the other one changes. That's something to keep in mind for later on in this video. So now if we go back to our amazing diagram here, we can see the power of GNU Stow. All GNU Stow really does under the hood is manage the creation and deletion and a couple other things of symlinks. So if you have a repository full of symlinks, you can use GNU Stow and and the stow command to create symlinks in a smart way on all of your machines. Now on each machine, each file that's in your dot files, let's say, will be symlinked to your dot files repository that was cloned onto that machine. Let's show off how this works now with GNU stow. Now let's just say I have an example dot files folder here that I want to use stow with to stow away all of my dot files and eventually put it up on Git. Now GNU stow has some conventions around how it stows away dot files. Essentially what you wanna do is you wanna name your dot files. Now the naming convention for GNU stow is interesting, but once you understand it, it makes plenty of sense. Let's go over it like this. If you have a dot file and your dot file exists in your machine as let's say something like, I don't know, let's go with NeoVim for example, right? It'll exist in somewhere in .config slash NeoVim. Now, when it comes to GNU Stow, we want to name this accordingly, right? So in GNU Stow, we will expect that DAW file to be named after a package and then have the same directory that you want it to exist with on that machine. Let's show off what this looks like. So for .config nvim, in our GNU stow directory, we wanna create a new package, let's call it nvim. And within nvim, we wanna create the directory that we want that file or package to live on on our machine. So that would be .config slash nvim, and then everything can live underneath that. 
That is how you would name something in GNU Stell. Let's do one more example. Let's say we want to copy over our, I don't know, our Alacrity files, right? Alacrity configurations live in config slash Alacrity. Alacrity is the terminal emulator I've been using on Arch. I use Arch, by the way. Now in GNU Stell, the way you would name this Alacrity package is very similarly to NeoVim. You want to name a new Alacrity package, and then you want to recreate the config directory that Alacrity needs to live with in your computer. Okay, now let's just do one more that's like super simple. Let's talk about ZSHRC. Our ZSHRC just exists basically in the home directory as a dot file, pretty simple stuff. In GNU Sto, you wanna create a new package called ZSH and name our dot file exactly where it needs to go, which is our home ZSHRC, simple, cool. Awesome. Okay, now let's do this. Let's see what it looks like in practice. Now we want to move our NeoVim configuration, which currently lives under config NeoVim, to the new NVim package we created under the config subdirectory. Okay, great. So now if we look into our dot files here, we can see that in NVim we have dot config, which has NVim, which includes all of our NeoVim configuration files. Okay, great. If I open NeoVim, because I just moved all of my configuration files into this new directory that's using GNU Sto, you can see that NeoVim is completely bare. There's nothing to it. But using GNU Sto, all we have to do is type the Sto command in the name of the package we want to Sto onto this computer, which for us is NVim. That's how it works with the naming convention. If we do sto nvim and hit enter, this will move everything under the nvim directory to the home directory on our computer, which means that we are now symlinking .config slash nvim to our homes .config slash nvim. We can check this by going to our homes .config directory and now checking using ls l and searching for nvim. Let's see. Yes, now we have an nvim folder here, which is really just a sim link to our example dot files, nvim .config slash nvim. That's how GNU Sto works. It's super easy to move all of your configuration files over to GNU Sto and then to just recreate this existing dot file configuration on any computer that you have. So now let's just do one more example just to kind of repeat this so we get this in our brains a little bit better. Let's say that I want my tmux configuration to live in my example dot files repo here. So now let's say we want to copy our tmux configuration from where it lives in right now to our now new GNU Sto dot files. We want to create a new package, which is tmux. That's what we want to call this here. This is the top level directory within our GNU Sto dot files directory. And underneath this, let's just CD into it. Now we want to move our tmux configuration, which currently lives at our base home directory, tmux.conf, to this directory right here because we want it to just be in our home directory. So underneath this package, we just wanna call this tmux.conf. Okay, simple. Now that I've moved my tmux configuration over, if I open tmux, this is a base tmux config. There's nothing interesting going on here. But again, if I type in my base GNU Sto directory, Sto tmux, and we search for everything under that directory and we pipe it to grep to tmux, we can see now that our tmux.com file is symbolically linked to example dot files tmux tmux.conf. Awesome. Now, if we open up tmux, we can see that tmux is back to its original glory. This is the tmux configuration that I had configured before I removed it from my machine, and now GNU Sto put it back on my machine using symlinks. And so let's just say that we want to change something in one of our configuration files. Let's say that our NeoVim configuration, we want to change one of our plugins, right? If we change one of these plugin files locally, what will happen is it will also change things where it's sim linked. So our example dot files folder will also get those changes. So any computer that I have my DAW files on using GNU Sto using symlinks, if I change those at all, I can recommit them now to my GitHub repo and all the rest of my computers, as long as I just pull down the Git repo, will have all these new changes. So you can manage GNU Sto DAW files from anywhere for any computer. GNU Sto truly is a game changer when it comes to managing DAW files and managing different computers and configurations throughout your life. I love it, I think it's amazing. I have a GNU Sto DAW files repository linked down below, so check that out. And hey, thanks, nerds.